Hello, I'm Atsubo George and Merry Christmas. Praise God. Today is the 25th of December and we, not just with the whole world, most of the whole world is celebrating the birth of Jesus. Now this gives credence to the truth that Jesus indeed came into this world. And if we be all believe that he came into this world, then it's our duty, we that know better, to drive his mission and tell the world why he came. It's not just the birthday of another person. You know, Satan wanted it to be so. When he told Jesus, I will give you all the kingdoms of this world if you just bow down and worship me. Jesus would have been just like another great emperor or fellow that lived on the earth. But Jesus was more than that. In all that he did, he gave the main sacrifice that brought salvation to mankind. So when we celebrate today, it's not just about the eating and drinking and the sharing of gifts. Every gift we share must carry the message of why Jesus came. Jesus himself said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it in abundance. Brothers and sisters, do you have life? Do the people around you have life? Do everyone you meet have life? We have a duty because we know the truth. We have a duty to share with everyone. Share with the old, share with the young. Jesus came to give us life. And I've often said this, that was his main mission. His main mission was to give us life. And today as the world celebrate him, we give him praise and we'll give the father praise for loving us so much. John, in John, Jesus was quoted as saying, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Isaiah prophesied and said, unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. And brothers and sisters, he said something amazing in that scripture. Isaiah chapter nine, he says, for the government shall be on his shoulders and he shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace now in your study analyze all these names isaiah was prophesying concerning him and say he shall be called these names and you know what it's not just referring to us calling him like we do in church. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor. So say, Wonderful God. That's not the fulfillment of the prophecy. The fulfillment of the prophecy is when we as God's children in his name, we begin to do things. And when we do things, then the world realizes we do it in his name. And then they say, this is wonderful praise God yes when we speak in his name and counsel comes to people's hearts and 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 listen we're not just talking about somebody giving counsel in one street corner we're talking about when kings will be counseled in his name just like jo Joseph did in Egypt he says look God gives interpretation of dreams. Daniel did the same thing to Nebuchadnezzar. It is God who gives the interpretation. And they brought, not just interpretation, they brought counsel to kings. How did you come about this thing? Oh, I have the great counselor living in me. See, so he shall be called counselor. He shall be called the everlasting father. Who's the everlasting father? The one who is deliberate in taking care 
of you. Now that's why we're sharing these things we're sharing in this season on tithes and offerings. You see, people have this misconception that when we, when we talk about tithes and offering, it's a bid to take from you. No, no. Because you see, every true believer and every true preacher is practicing these things. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. I said every true is practicing these things. There is no believer who's really walking in Christ and walking by the Holy Ghost, who's not giving offerings, who's not giving tithes. I said, no, but I know some preachers who don't believe in tithing. Forget about them. You see, now there are genuine ones who are just being stung by the serpent. I'm telling you the truth. And they followed. They will still come to the place of truth. Yes. Because so what happened to them? I'll tell you what happened to them. They had a heart condition. You see, most times when people oppose the truth, it's not because they want to oppose the truth. It's because there is something that happens in their heart and they didn't realize that something happened in their heart. They get into either jealousy, strife, envy, or bitterness. They, you see, now, it's amazing when, when, when you're bitter against your wife or you're bitter against, but you see, you don't realize it when you are bitter at your job. Someone can face disappointment financially and not handle it properly. And, and suddenly, while he's trying to process that disappointment, he hears someone come up and say, when you tithe, God is going to bless you. And he goes, how? See, that statement have opened the door for bitterness to come in. And, 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 and you, you know some people don't know how the devil operates. And, and sometimes you oppose things, not, be, not necessarily because you want to even research whether it's true or false, but because just because someone you don't like said it. So you say, no, I, I don't believe in what you're saying. Now, now, as a preacher, we face these things. And if your heart is not buried in Christ, you will not even know. You will go so far. It comes to everyone. It comes to me. And you know, sometimes you just, you just go, huh? And then some of us, it doesn't take a few minutes before we realize what's going on and say, hey, stop it. So it comes. You see, when you develop this lifestyle of acknowledging God in everything, says in all your ways, acknowledge Him. When you develop this lifestyle, then you realize that, you see, you be, for example, in 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 um, in, in computer computer safety and, and computer security. It, it's it's not it, it, the joy is not that nobody attacked you. The joy is realizing that over the last one week, your system have been bombarded with attacks, but it could not penetrate. That's when you know. Oh, my firewall is strong you see that so the same thing as a believer satan is always looking for an opportunity to attack you don't ever deceive yourself to think i'm so great satan cannot come near me you are deceiving yourself as a preacher oh he's he see he tries to attack you he now when you say attack you say i slept in the night i saw it. i had an attack in the night and and what, what kind of attack they are talking about oh something came to press me in the night oh i saw someone accusing me in the night those are no attacks those are childish attacks i'm telling you when, when someone talks that like, and i went to preach over man that night i faced great attacks those are not attacks. those are baby demons troubling you we don't call those things attack. Real attack. <laughs> See, it has nothing to do with your health. It has nothing to do, nothing at all. You see, because your health challenge, you can nip it at the bottom. You can easily, you just know, I mean, what is this? And destroy it immediately. But when Satan comes, 
you are hungry, really hungry, and thinking about how to get food, and he shows up and says, if you are the son of God, why don't you command these stones to be made bread? Now you see, now that's the devil coming at you. Because you will not easily realize that this is an attack. You will not easily realize it. Some have even fallen for it before realizing that they were attacked. See? Real attack is when you see an opposition to what you have believed. That is warfare. When God has taught you something and suddenly everything around you is opposing it. Now you have to ask yourself, do I really believe what Jesus said to me? So I was telling you, he shall be called everlasting father. The one who deliberately cares for his children. Everlasting father. Meaning his, his, his father, his fatherhood is, doesn't have an expiry date. He doesn't father you until you are 50. He doesn't father, no, everlasting father. That's what he is called. So even if you are 88 years old, he is still your father. He still treats you like a child. He still takes care of you. He doesn't tell you you are man enough. You are old enough. No, not Ainara Tupe. Do you know God is eternal? How old do you think he is? Now that's, that's the reason he put all these things in place. And many don't understand it. And because they don't understand it, they fight it. I was talking to someone recently and they were like, the, uh, but why do preachers fight against uh, tithes? I said, it's very simple. If you, if you look at it very well, they are not sincere. They are not sincere because you fight against tithing, which is just 10% that God requires. And then you turn around and say, you can give offerings. And you find those people now come up again to start saying, after all, 10% is too small. Ah, ah. You see where they are driving at? Actually, the 10% is not enough for them. So they want to tell you that they want to free you from the bondage, like they call it, of 10%. But you don't understand that they are bringing you into another kind of bondage. Where they now hold your moral conscience by telling you that it's 10% not too small for everything God has done for you. Then they begin to say, me, I give, I can't even remember what last time I gave 10%. The, the least I give to God is 90%. Now, when they say things like that, what do you think they are driving at? You understand what I'm saying? So, you see, the heart, the, the root of all this communication is really not right. Why don't we just stick with what Jesus has taught us? Why don't we just stick with what God have taught us God is wiser than any man he's wiser I tell you the truth you see people argue scriptures and then they argue from this side and they argue from that side when you grow to maturity you realize that every one of them actually saying the same thing and a day will come when we'll all realize that there was no point no basis for that argument in the first place like it's like two people trying to describe a large animal like an elephant now you're on the right side another person is on the left side and and you're trying to describe this is how the elephant looks and you draw from what you see and another person says, no this is how it looks and then both of them, no 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 you're wrong no you're wrong no you're wrong no you're wrong and for some reason you are made to change sides. And then you realize that actually you were not wrong. 
Yeah, you too. I realized you were not wrong. Now, this may have taken like five years, five months, ten years for you to realize this. So why don't you develop this simple principle in scriptures? We have the Holy Ghost as our teacher. Jesus testified and said he will teach you all things. Why don't you develop this attitude of being patient and taking the matter to him and let him be your teacher? I said develop the patience. We celebrate Jesus today. And what use will it be to celebrate Jesus and you not knowing everything he came to do for you? He came to give you life. And this life is in abundance. Jesus came to fulfill the promise God made with Abraham, or God made to Abraham. And God said to Abraham, through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. God actually said, through your seed. And brothers and sisters, that seed is Christ. And today, Paul told us in the book of Galatians, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and you are an heir according to the promise. Now, let's look at that scripture in Galatians chapter 3. Galatians Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29 it says and if ye be Christ I'm reading from the old King James now then are ye Abraham's seed I want you to take note of this God have said I will bless you and your seed. And in your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So Christ is that seed. And now he tells us here, and I believe Paul when he said this, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. So now, letting you know that the seed is not just an imaginary, imaginary being or thing. No, it's literal. Christ. Now, he didn't say if you are Jesus. Because you see, Jesus became Jesus Christ. And by that, he, as Jesus, became Abraham's seed. Now, we that are born of God today, we that have received the Holy Ghost, that's why if any man have not received the Holy Ghost, he is not part of him. He's not, he, he, you can't say you're born again and you don't have the Holy Ghost in you. You are not saved yet. You're just like Jesus. Yes, that's what it means. You're just like Jesus. You are not saved. It says, if you are Christ, if you belong to Christ, if Christ have filled you, in Romans, if any man does not have the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. It's as simple as that. So, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heir according to the promise. Take note of that. Heir according to the promise. So, there was a promise that includes the heir of Abraham. That's the seed of Abraham. So, we as Christ, we that belong to Christ, we have come to inherit that promise so what is the promise that's what we'll begin to look at tomorrow praise god thank you lord jesus hey it's christmas day don't let anything make you sad today jesus came to give you life why don't you receive the life and believe in him and say lord i'm gonna live the life that you brought I'm going to live the life that you came to give me. I refuse every other thing but your life. And my testimony shall be, I have.
the life of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray for everyone listening to me right now. I release your blessing upon them, especially today. Let the reason for Jesus be made manifest in their lives. Let them bear the testimony that Jesus came. Let them bear the testimony that they live because of him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Reach out and love somebody today. Tell them the good news. As you give gifts, give the most important gift. Tell them the good news. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.